Hey CPA candidates, it's Matt from Universal CPA Review. Thanks for checking out this video where I'm going to help you understand how to work through an AR roll forward simulation. Now this simulation is great because it has nine exhibits, which is very reflective of what's being tested on the exam. So you'll be given all the different components and activity to roll forward the account receivable balance from the beginning of the period to the end of the period. Now this is critical because candidates are seeing this simulation day in and day out. Before we dive into the video, just a few things. First thing I wanna point out is Universal CPA Review is the only CPA review course that harnesses the power of visual learning. In addition, we're the only course that has video explanations for every single multiple choice question and simulation. That will help you get to the aha moment and it's like having a personal tutor right at your side. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel, join our Facebook study groups. The link is in the description of this video. You can sign up for a free trial. And then if you've purchased a review course, especially one from one of those traditional text heavy courses, and it's just not working out, ask us about the spilt milk program. There's no reason to cry over spilt milk. So move on and work with a course that will get the job done for you. Let's dive into the video. An accounts receivable roll forward is a very, very common simulation on the far section of the CPA exam. Now, I don't want you to think about this as only being applicable to accounts receivable. Yes, we're going to be talking about accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful accounts here, but the roll forward, as we learned in our cash versus accrual, we can roll forward any balance sheet account when we think about what increases an account and what would decrease an account. So we'll start with the simulation overview and then we'll move into the accounts receivable roll forward and then we'll move into the allowance for doubtful accounts roll forward and the acronym there is ADA. Uh, allowance for doubtful accounts is a mouthful and we don't want to have to say that every time. And then once we solve those two, well, those two balances are necessary to present accounts receivable net in the financial statements, right? Because as we know, accounts receivable, we need to present it with its net realizable value. How much value is the company actually going to extract out of that balance? Now, what makes this simulation challenging is the number of exhibits. You can see we have a ton of them, and this is a trend that isn't stopping any time on the far section of the CPA exam. They really want to test whether you can flip through exhibits and know what information you're looking for rather than just solving it like a multiple choice question, right? So it's extremely important to flip through the exhibits before you start the simulation so that you know what you have and so that when you're going through the simulation, you have a rough idea of what's available to you. So we'll start by rolling for the gross accounts receivable balance. And the simulation tells us that we're gonna roll it forward from November 30th, year five to December 31st, year five. And so what does the accounts receivable roll forward look like? Well, as we learned in the lecture, we always start with the beginning accounts receivable balance, which in this case would be the November 30th balance, right? And then what increases accounts receivable? Well, that's credit sales. When we sell to customers on credit, and this is not credit card, right? This is when we extend them credit, well, that, offsetting account would be to record a receivable for that sale. And then when we collect the cash from them, that decreases the balance. Now, the other two items that do impact accounts receivable are when we write off receivables and if there's other adjustments like converting AR to a note receivable. So are we ready to dive in to the accounts receivable roll forward? I think so. So we'll start with the beginning gross accounts receivable balance. And as we just talked about, that is the November 30th year five ending balance, right? And then that rolls forward to December 1st of year five. And so where can we get this information? Well, looking through the exhibits, they gave us the November year five final trial balance. And so when we look in there, we can see that the gross accounts receivable balance is listed there and it's $25,000. So that's the number we're gonna input into our roll forward as our starting point. So the next piece of the roll forward is credit sales during December. So what 
exhibit should we pull up? Well, we need something that would indicate the number of sales in December. And they give us a December sales report. And so when we open that up, well, there's a lot of information. We have the transaction date, opportunity number, right? Because it's from Salesforce, the customer name, the sales rep, the payment method, payment terms, and amount. And so when we look at the total, it's $36,750. But what we need to focus on is the payment method, right? It looks like for all customers except for Big Sky, well, the company issued credit to those customers. However, Big Sky, air they paid in cash. And we actually have an email from the CFO that indicates that Big Sky is the only customer that continues to always pay in cash. All right, so every other sale was issued on credit. And so the Big Sky Air, that totaled 4,750 for the period. So that means credit sales during December were 32,000. So that's what we'll enter into our roll forward. So now we need to look for the cash receipts during December. Now this isn't only for sales that occurred in December. This could have been for any period in December or prior, right? And so we'll need to bring up the December cash receipts report. And this information could have come from the bank statement, the general ledger. In this case, we just have an email from the treasury department that indicates that total cash receipts relating to customers who purchased on credit totaled $22,000 in December, right? So that's actually going to be a credit to our roll forward. So that is going to be a negative $22,000 that we enter into the roll forward, right? Because when we receive cash from customers, that is going to decrease our gross accounts receivable balance. So we have the core components of our accounts receivable roll forward completed. Now, when it comes to the last two rows, write-offs during December and other adjustments, uh, you could see these on the actual exam. And this was what's difficult because you don't know exactly if there's just one instance or multiple instances. And so this is why it's important to have flipped through the exhibits so you know sort of what information you have and where you can look. So we'll start with write-offs during December, right? And when a company writes off a receivable, they're basically saying there is absolutely zero chance that we will collect this receivable. And so they maybe have already reserved 100% for this receivable, but now they're just going to completely remove it from their balance sheet, right? So that's going to decrease accounts receivable. And we actually see that for Salt Lake Air write-off exhibit, when we read through that, it looks like Salt Lake Air was entering into bankruptcy in year six. And so the CFO said, let's just go ahead and write this off. Now we know there's almost no chance we're collecting this receivable, right? And they had already fully reserved for it, but now is the time to write it off. So that's going to be what number, right? We don't know. And so we can bring up the November AR aging report, because presumably this receivable would have been in the November 30th year five accounts receivable balance. And when we look in there, there's a $2,000 balance for Salt Lake Air that is greater than 90 days overdue, right? So that is the amount uh, that is being written off for Salt Lake Air. And that is going to be a credit because it's decreasing our accounts receivable balance. So we're gonna plug in negative 2000 for write-offs during December. And since we should always be thinking about what is the journal entry that would be recorded, well, we're removing both the receivable and the reserve for Salt Lake Air, right? So we are going to debit allowance for doubtful accounts for 2000 because we've already reserved for that amount. And now we need to remove it from our reserve. And then we're completely removing the receivable as well from the balance sheet. So we're gonna credit accounts receivable for 2000, right? So that's the journal entry that would have been recorded. Now, as I mentioned, how do we know this is the only write-off? Well, we don't, but if you flip through the rest of the exhibits, you won't see anything else relating to write-offs that occurred during December. So on the exam, you're gonna to have to really be diligent in reading through all the information. So the last potential adjustment row here is other adjustments. And the most common one relates to a company converting accounts receivable balances to a note receivable. Now this could be requested by the customer or the company could say, this is what we're doing, right? 
And so this is where, again, is important to read through the exhibits, because if you did, you would have noticed that there's an exhibit called Whitefish Air Note Conversion. And when we look at this exhibit, we see it's an email from the CFO. And the CFO is basically telling us Whitefish Air proposed to convert $3,000 of outstanding invoices into a note with a maturity date three years from now. So basically the company is no longer going to have an accounts receivable balance for Whitefish Air on their balance sheet. Instead, they're going to have a note receivable. So when that conversion occurs, that's going to decrease our accounts receivable balance. Now it would increase notes receivable, but that's not what we're focused on. And so what's the adjustment here? It's going to be a negative $3,000 because it's reducing our gross accounts receivable balance. And one last thing here is what would the journal entry be to record this uh, note conversion? Well, we would debit notes receivable for 3,000 and it would likely be split between short and long term, depending on the maturity date. And then we would credit accounts receivable for 3,000, right? Because we no longer have that accounts receivable balance. So now that we've attacked all of the adjustment rows in our accounts receivable roll forward, we now can solve for the ending gross accounts receivable balance. And so when we look at our roll forward, right, we started with 25,000, we increased it with credit sales of 32,000, but then we collected cash from customers of 22,000, and then we had write-offs of 2,000 and other adjustments of 3,000. That gets us to an ending accounts receivable balance of $30,000. So that's what goes into the simulation there. So now we can move on to the allowance for doubtful accounts roll forward. And this is a very similar concept, except what increases and what decreases this allowance for doubtful accounts roll forward is different, right? Primarily what's going to increase it or decrease it is if we have to record additional bad debt expense or we over reserved and we have to remove bad debt expense, right? And that will decrease our ending allowance for doubtful accounts balance. Now, as we learned in the lecture, there are a variety of methods allowed under US GAAP for calculating the ending allowance for doubtful accounts balance at a period end. And so we'll get into that in a bit when we need to determine what method they use, right? Because we do have a, an exhibit called bad debt policy, and that will outline the method that they've chosen to use. So starting with the beginning allowance for doubtful accounts balance, well, remember for the gross accounts receivable balance, we started with basically the November 30th year five balance. And so we can go back to that trial balance and we can pull out basically the allowance for doubtful accounts balance, which is negative $7,000. Now overall, allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset. So it's going to be a negative number in the current asset section of the balance sheet, right? So when we plug it into uh, the simulation, it's going to be a negative number as well. So that is why the beginning allowance for doubtful accounts balance is negative $7,000. So this next row focuses on bad debt expense. And I don't want you to assume that we're always going to be recording additional bad debt expense because we could be removing bad debt expense. And so what we're going to do is pull up the bad debt policy for Sunshine Adventures. And when we read through that, well, it says that they have elected to use the aging of accounts receivable method. So that means basically they list out all of the different balances owed to them by customers and it's in buckets, right? And we can see that for the buckets they have identified, they've gone ahead and put the following reserve percentages for each bucket. So for current, zero to 30 days and 31 to 60 days, well, they don't reserve anything. But if the balance or the invoice is 61 to 90 days, they reserve 80% of that balance. And if it's more than 90 days overdue, they reserve 100% of that balance. So we're gonna to need to use those percentages and apply them to the December AR aging schedule to see what our reserve or allowance for doubtful accounts should be. So the first thing we need to do is bring up that account receivable aging schedule. And as we can see in the 61 to 90 day bucket, the balance is $2,625. And then in the 90 plus day bucket, the balance is 5,900. 
So the first thing we need to do is apply those bad debt reserve percentages from the bad debt policy. So as you can see, we'll take the 61 to 90 day balance of $2,625 multiplied by 80% and that equals $2,100. Now for the 90 day bucket, the calculation is the same. We would take the 5,900, but they're saying 100% of that should be reserved. So 5,900 times 100%, that equals 5,900. And at this point, this is the ending required balance. So all we need to do is add those two balances together. And that tells us the ending required balance is going to be $8,000. So in our ADA roll forward, we're going to plug in $8,000, but it's negative, right? Because it's a contra asset. So that's going to be our ending balance for the December 31st, year five final trial balance. Now we also need to figure out the amount of bad debt expense. So we're gonna to have to prepare an ADA roll forward. And as you recall, well, bad debt expense, that increases the reserve and then any write-offs in the period would decrease the reserve. And then any recoveries, that would also increase the reserve just like bad debt expense. So we didn't have any recoveries, but we did have write-offs of $2,000 related to Salt Lake Air, right? Remember the AR roll forward and the 2000? Well, in this roll for, we're going to plug in positive 2000 since that would actually decrease our ADA balance, right? So it's a bit tricky there, but just make sure you understand because it's a natural credit balance for the allowance for doubtful accounts balance that any write-offs, well, we would actually be debiting that account, which is why it's a positive $2,000. So the only number that causes this ADA roll forward to balance is bad debt expense of $3,000. And it's negative because when we think about the journal entry, well, the impact to the ADA balance is a credit for $3,000 because when we need to record additional bad debt expense, well, we debit bad debt expense for $3,000 and the credit will increase our reserve. And when we factor it in with the write-offs, that gets us up to the ending ADA balance of 8,000 that we calculated based on our AR aging analysis. So the fundamental difference between gross accounts receivable and the allowance for doubtful accounts roll forward, right, is that for the allowance for doubtful accounts, we actually had a method to calculating the ending required balance. And then we had to either increase bad debt expense or decrease bad debt expense to get to that ending allowance balance. So that's a bit different than what we had to do for the gross accounts receivable balance. So the last part of this simulation, it just says what amount should be presented for accounts receivable net of allowance for default accounts in the year five financial statements. Well, all we need to do is state this at net realizable value, right? So we have our ending gross accounts receivable balance of 30,000, but the company's saying, well, we estimate that at least 8,000 of that is not going to be collected, right? So we need to reduce our gross accounts receivable balance down to $22,000, which is the net realizable value, right? So that's what you would see in the financial statements, $22,000. So let's take a moment to debrief. That was a lot of hard work. This is a very difficult simulation. But like I said in the beginning, it's extremely important. So if there's any aspect of this simulation that you didn't understand, go back through it again, because I guarantee you if you didn't get it right on the first time, well, the second or third time, it will make more sense. And you just absolutely need to be prepared for this type of simulation.